Thank you very much. First of all, let me uh, thank you, Congressman O'Rourke, for uh, lifting up my mother, who was a phenomenal woman, passed away uh, last year, who broke many glass ceilings. And I want to thank you for recognizing what a true shero she was. And I, I just have to tell you, um, I want to thank you also for your uh, tireless advocacy on behalf of my hometown, the place of my birth, El Paso, Texas, on so many fronts, but especially on behalf of immigrants. Uh, I grew up in an immigrant community, and I can tell you my mother, my grandfather, my sisters, my brothers, excuse me, my <clears throat> brother-in-laws, everybody um, from El Paso consider you our representative. And so thank you very much. We're very proud of you. I attended St. Joseph's Elementary School on Waco Avenue, and we were taught that we must value the dignity of all human beings. I was taught by the Sisters of Loretto in El Paso. And so now representing uh, the beautiful East Bay of Northern California, my views and what I learned from my mother and my grandfather and my parents in El Paso really drive me to continue our fight on behalf of our young people, on behalf of our dreamers. Four years ago, President Obama made history by announcing the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival Program, DACA. This critical program provides, and this is just common sense, humane protections for undocumented Americans, mind you, who were brought to our nation as young children. Since the executive action, about 744,000 young people have benefited from this important program. And I'm proud to say, though, that now one in three dreamers in the United States are from um, my state of California. These are brilliant young people who deserve the chance to live the American dream. DACA empowers young people and keeps families together even in the face of Republican inaction on comprehensive immigration reform. Now, this is an issue that is dear to my heart. As I said, uh, I grew up in El Paso in an immigrant community, and so I, I know no option. I mean, we have to protect our young people and keep families together. More than a quarter of the residents now in my congressional district were born outside of the United States. Tens of thousands of young people have benefited from the DACA program. We sponsored uh, a town meeting several weeks ago, actually was sponsored by Oakland Community Organizations, which is an affiliate of PICO. And it was an amazing um, town meeting. Everyone participated. It was multiracial. It was held in the uh, Catholic Cathedral. And there's several stories I'd just like to share very quickly that we heard that night. One dreamer and DACA recipient, uh, let's call her Amy. She was born in Venezuela and immigrated to the United States as a child. Now, DACA opened doors for Amy. She received her bachelor's degree at UCLA and then went on to obtain her law degree. And this is really impressive. Uh, through her hard work, Amy became the first DACA recipient to be admitted into the California bar. I'm so proud of Amy. She has taken her skills and experiences to give back to our community. Today she works at a nonprofit in the East Bay where she is an advocate for immigration reform and helps other young people benefit from the DACA program. But while she spends her days helping her community, she still lives in fear, in fear of her fa for her family, in fear for her friends, in fear of being deported at any moment. I have another constituent, let's call him Gabriel, who I met recently at the same event. Now, Gabriel was born in uh, Mexico and immigrated to the United States 10 years ago. Since then, he has used his voice to empower his community and advocate for immigrants. In high school, he started a local Dreamers Club advocating for the inclusion and advancement of undocumented students. He went on to attend UC Berkeley and was able to receive funds to cover most of his studies. Through DACA and state policies, he was able to afford the high cost of living in the Bay Area and receive a world-class education. He and Amy show the incredible potential of our nation's young people, their determination to live the American dream 
receive a quality education and help their communities was really unlocked through DACA. It's terrible to think of the dreams that would be destroyed by rolling back DACA now. Time and time again, I hear stories like Gabriel's and Amy's, stories of families who were kept together because of DACA and of young people who were able to attend college and pursue their dreams. These young people are afraid. They fear that their families will be torn apart, that their parents may be deported, that their American dream is truly in jeopardy. We've always been a nation of immigrants. This is a history that we should be proud of. But right now, we know that immigrants in my district, in El Paso, all across our nation are scared to death about what this next administration will bring. Their families who wake up in fear that come January 21st, their work or their school will be raided. There are dreamers who dread being forced to leave the country that they have ever, the only country that they have ever known. This is morally wrong. The nuns who taught me at St. Joseph's would be shocked if they knew what was taking place now. We're better than this. These young people deserve better from our country. They deserve better from this Congress. So again, I'm calling on my Republican colleagues to let us vote on bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform, legislation that will reunify families. It will grow our economy and provide a clear pathway to citizenship. And so I know yourself, all of our colleagues are going to continue to fight for and to pass immigration reform and the DREAM Act. But minimally, we've got to protect our nation's dreamers, our immigrants, and all families. Thank you again for your leadership. Thank you for inviting me to be with you tonight. And again, my family is very proud of you, our congressman.